I've combined the embryology and congenital heart defects section. You never really need to know much about embryology and it just fits better to have them together. Uh, we'll talk about fetal circulation, uh, right to left shunts, and then left to right shunts. Left to right shunts are far more common, um, but the right to left shunts are a little bit more sinister. Um, and then the coarctation of the aorta briefly. Um, so heart develops about four weeks. You know, this is a little bit debatable. What is a heart? What is beating? Um, some people go uh, and say up to, updates all the way to six or seven weeks. Um, obviously, that has a lot of interesting ethical implications. Um, fetal circulation. So uh, veins, typic, veins always go back towards the heart. They typically have deoxygenated blood. One exception we know of is the pulmonary vein. Another one is the umbilical vein coming from mom to the fetus. Um, because of the high uh, pre like pressure and flow from the umbilical vein, um, we don't typically want the blood to go to organs that don't need it for two reasons. One, it might damage those organs if we have too much blood flowing into them when they're early in development. And two, if there's high resistance in an organ, then we're just going to lose some of our like energy, some of our oomph as the blood is traveling, trying to get through and, and feed uh, the baby's tissues. So a couple of... Uh, features developed, evolved over, over I'm sure, billions or no, millions of years. Um, the ductus venosus, uh, we're going to bypass hepatic circulation. Um, then we have the foramen ovale from the right atrium to the left atrium. The right atrium is higher in pressure in fetal uh, uh, life, and, and uh, the left atrium is higher in pressure in, in adulthood. Um, and then the ductus arteriosus, going from the pulmonary veins to the aorta. Um, so some of the blood might leak through to the right ventricle that doesn't go through the foramen ovale, it goes to the pulmonary vein. Again, why go to the lungs? We don't need to oxygenate it. We're just gonna slow it down. There's resistance in the lungs. We're gonna damage the lungs. So we want it to go into the aorta. Um, again, in fetal life, this is higher pressure, but of course the pressure gradient is reversed in adulthood. Um, all of these should decay uh, as someone's born in a couple first days, months, years of their lives um, when it doesn't, a pathology develops. A um, couple things, notochord becomes the nucleus pulposus, the foramen ovale becomes the fossus ovalis and the right atrium, the ductus venosus becomes the ligamentum venosum. And most important probably uh, is this and uh, I guess this, the ductus arteriosus becomes the ligamentum arteriosum. Um, Endomethacin is an EDZ, which is sometimes needed to close it if people have a patent one. Um, PGE2 prostaglandin uh, keeps it open, so uh, it makes sense that the NSAID might counter that. And here we have a little picture uh, of the connection. Um, so normally what happens is the septum secundum uh, fuses with the septum primum, and um, we, we close the gap and... and uh, and shown here, um, but sometimes a little bit remains open, and this is the uh, patent foramen ovale where blood can uh, leak through. Um, and uh, once a baby is born, it takes its first breath. Uh, we have this decrease in intrathoracic pressure. We have oxygen coming in, so we have hypoxic vasodilation, which further decreases the pressure. So I'm going to pull more blood in. Uh, to the lungs. So usually some of the blood escapes the lungs through the, the foramen ovale, some escapes through the ductus arteriosus. Um, but you know what? A little bit more is going to get in once the baby starts breathing. More blood into the lungs means more blood into the left atria. And we get to a point actually where the left atrial pressure pretty early on after a baby's born is higher than the right atrial pressure. It then can close the flap of the uh, foramen ovale and then the, the septum fuse and uh, hopefully it goes away. Um, so left to right shunts, I think of L to R. This is late ter, later in life. These are less severe. These are more common. Um, and yes, they come later in life in adolescence or adulthood. So these are acyanotic. Uh, people typically won't be blue because they're not as severe. Uh, vape, VSDs, ASDs. ASDs are also basically PFOs, PDAs, and then Eisenmeiger um, phenomena. Um, the larger hole is obviously the worse uh, the outcome, uh, but remember that a large hole means that we're going to have um, a little bit slower velocity than a small hole due to the continuity equation, and it's the small hole that causes turbulent flow, which causes the whooshing sound. Uh, so 
if you're listening to a murmur and it's very quiet, that might actually be a worse VSD, a worse ASD. And when you have these left to right shunts, you should expect the right ventricle and pulmonary system to be higher in oxygen than it normally is. A VSD, typically these close on their own when they occur, you know, someone might have heart failure, right? If you're trying to pump stuff out of the left ventricle, it's just going to go into the right ventricle. So uh, you're not going to get oxygen to your body as efficiently. Um, as a result, people be, uh, be fatigued and, and maybe bluish, often not. Again, these are acyanotic. Um, this is hollow systol systolic, and that's because there is always a larger pressure in the left ventricle to the right ventricle, but it's not that big of a difference during the diastole. So the amount of blood flowing through the VST is pretty small. But during contraction, the left ventricular pressure skyrockets. Now we have a lot more blood coming in, which is going to be associated with a higher, um, uh, a louder sound, which we can pick up as a, a systolic murmur. Um, atrial septal defect, uh, basically a PFO. So instead of left atrium, left ventricle, uh, right ventricle, it's left atrium to right atrium. Um, here we have extra fluid going into the right atrium, which means the right ventricle has more fluid to pump out. This is going to further delay the closure of the pulmonic valve. Remember, for the S2 sound, it's aortic first, pulmonic second. And now we have a fixed delay because more blood is coming in constantly through the left atrium. So this is associated with Down syndrome. We have something called a paradoxic uh, embolus. So like 90% of the um, uh, clots that somebody gets might come from the deep veins of their legs. This is going to go through the venous system. It's going to enter to the right atria, the right ventricle, and then it goes into the lungs where usually it's going to get caught in the lungs. And, you know, that's not good a pulmonary embolism, whether in the venous or arterial portion of the, the lungs, but it is much better uh, to, to go there than for it to get caught in the brain or something. So if you have an atrial septal defect, the um, embolus can flow uh, the, from the right atrium to the left atrium, which goes to the left ventricle, and they can get pumped up through the aorta, and it goes to the brain. So a lot of people will get strokes as a result of this. Um, ASD can be due to uh, a defect in the secundum, defect in the primum, um, and uh, so it's a missing tissue issue. Um, alternatively, we have a PFO, which is like 98% similar. The difference is that ASD, there's missing tissue. Um, while PFO, there was just improper fusion or closure of the foramen ovale. Um, PFOs are, are probably a bit more common and they're also smaller too, which means they will be louder. Um, so uh, during embryological development, we have this uh, ostium is the opening and primum is the first, the first opening and the first septum. Um, and then later we have a ostium secundum. Um, now we have a septum, a second septum form, the septum secundum, um, and now we have the form in valley. So blood is going to just rush in like this. So this is normal during fetal development. Um, after birth, though, as we said, the large decrease in intrathoracic pressure and the um, um, oxygen-induced vasodilation means that we're going to get more pressure to the left atrium, and it should ideally close this bad boy. Um, if it doesn't, it's a PFO, and if we have a defect, it's an ASD. Most of these are secundum defects, 90%, 10% are primum defects. These are going to be largely associated with Down syndrome. Um, and as we mentioned, the lungs act as a kind of a filter. They play defense. They catch all of the clots that come from your the deep veins of your legs, um, and uh, so they don't, they don't get pumped out through the, vent, the left ventricle to the rest of your body. But if you have an ASD, they might go through, um, I suppose it could happen with a VSD too, but for whatever reason, it's more commonly associated with ASD, I think. Um, feel free to fact check me on that, but it goes through the ASD and it gets pumped to the brain anyways. Um, patent ductus arteriosus. So remember that the aorta is at a very high pressure always compared to the pulmonary veins. So whether you're at systole or diastole, you're always going to have lots of blood rushing through this, which is going to create a whooshing sound, which we can hear. So this murmur is going to be a continuous. It's the only murmur I know of that is both systolic and diastolic in nature. Um, now, it's going to be a little bit louder during the systole because that is where the pressure differential is even larger Um but again, as opposed to the VSD, where you only hear it during systole, this is merely louder during systole, but it's always present. Um, so as we mentioned, prostaglandins keep it open, so endomethin and NSAID is going to close it. Um, Eisenmenger syndrome. So 
all of these left to right shunts at the end of the day means that the right side of the heart is going to be pumping more blood. This is more strain in the right ventricle. It is therefore going to hypertrophy and the vessels due to the uh, hypertension are going to uh, uh, remodel becoming thicker. Um, now it's the right side of the heart that is uh, the, the, the particularly strong one. And the, what was a left to right shunt now might be a right to left shunt. So if I had a VSD, it used to be um, high pressure, left ventricle, lower pressure, right ventricle. Uh, but now, um, you know, it's been working out. It's all, it's all, it's now the badass in town and it, it pushes the, it's a high pressure and it pushes blood towards the left side of the heart. Um, this is associated with clubbing of the uh, hands and fingers. Most clots, or excuse me, most um, defects we said are left or right. They show up in later in life, um, VSD, PDA, ASD. And um, now the cyanotic ones, which we're going to switch to, it's a much smaller portion of the pie. Um, the tet tetralogy of uh, phthalate is the probably the most common of the cyanotic. But I would just maybe keep these um, relative numbers in the back of your head somewhere. Um, so this is more severe. It's less common and it's cyanotic. Babies are going to turn blue. It's fetal onset. It's, you know, these all connect. The fact that it's severe is why it's fetal onset and why it's called cyanotic as well. So uh, it's a bigger deal. <laughs> you get blue babies and you get birth. The three Bs. You will also see ASDs and VSDs in these. Um, don't let this confuse you. I would just consider these secondary to the more primary cyanotic pathology, right? So if in, if in, uh, um, tetra, tetra, tetralogy of phthalate, we see a VSD, I would still consider this a cyanotic rather than a cyanotic. So these will be considered the dominant and the VSD, ASD will be considered secondary. So here we can think of the six T's, truncus arteriosus is one vessel, transposition of great vessels is two vessels, tricuspid atresia is three, tetralogy of phthalate, well tetra is four, and there are four major features that we have to know about this. TAPVR is five letters, which stands for total anomalous pulmonary venous return. And then Epstein anomaly, I always just thought of the, the anomaly factors, the fact that it, it doesn't really fit into this. There's no T, there's no six letters. Basically, that's a cop out. Um, truncus arteriosus, during development, we have the truncus arteriosus, which is going to branch off into the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Um, those are separate, of course, but if you have the, this particular uh, birth defect, um, they're going to be merged into one. Uh, obviously, it's not good. Um, transposition of great vessels. So you're supposed to have like a twisting of the aorticopulmonary septum. And this rotation um, during fetal development causes the uh, pulmonary artery to be where it is and the aorta to be where it is. But for whatever case here, the transposition, these things it doesn't twist properly. And now the right ventricle actually goes to the aorta. Uh-oh and the left ventricle goes to the pulmonary artery. Um, so if blood is coming into the right atrium and then going to the right ventricle, and it's going straight to the aorta, um, technically it would never get over to the left side of the body. It would never get to the lungs, and uh, most importantly. And so this is not compatible with life. You know, this would only potentially work if you have a VSD or an ASD for viability. Um, but obviously, it's like having another defect to cure the first defect, which is still terrible. Um, tricuspid atresia. Atresia means something's gone away. Tricuspid is in the tricuspid valve. Um, so we can see that this is a normal heart. Here's my valve. Here's my right ventricle. Here, uh oh, where's the valve? It doesn't exist. So it's going to go right from the right atrium. It would just be trapped in the right atrium. This is also not compatible with life. It would just be trapped in the right atrium. It wouldn't you wouldn't have a full circuit for your system? But if you have a VSD or an ASD, then maybe it could go over to the left side. It could go to the lungs, and it is compatible with life, though it's still terrible. Um, the as you can imagine, if blood's not going into the right ventricle, maybe through uh, like an ASD, we're going to have this really teeny tiny, weak, puny right ventricle. So that's the hypoplastic, underdeveloped right ventricle as a consequence of the lack of a connection between the right atrium and the right ventricle. Um, tetralogy of phthalate. So um, this is associated with the George syndrome and the infundibula, which is just part of the interventricular septum, is going to be... Um, it's the top part really, is going to be pushed towards the right side of the heart. So um, the, let's see where we would start with this. Um, 
the infundibular displacement, so I guess it should go there and it's, it's kind of going here, it's gonna make this very narrow. So uh, infundibular displacement is, is the interventricular septum sort of blocking off the pulmonary valve, um, which is really just a form of stenosis. It makes it really difficult to pump blood through the pulmonary uh, valve and into the artery. Um, this is gonna cause right ventricular hypertrophy. Um, it, because it has to pump against this large like pulmonary afterload, it, it's going to toughen up, um, uh, kind of like Winslow that we saw earlier the mouse. Um, now the uh, the infundibular displacement, right? It's supposed to be connected. It's not connected, so it creates a ventricular septal defect. If the ventricular septal defect um, is going to allow blood to rush in that is not oxygenated and go straight into the aorta. This is called an overriding aorta, which really just means that oxygenated blood is mixing with the deoxygenated blood of the aorta. Um, these children are said to have tet spells where um, for whatever reason, they, they just the cyanosis becomes much worse. So the solution here is that they would squat. This would increase the afterload, um, which increases the right atrial pressure, um, uh, which um, excuse me, if we increase the, uh, if we increase the afterload, um, this would likely cause blood to prefer not to go through the aorta and instead to go into the pulmonary system. Um, so it's gonna, the afterload increasing is gonna cause blood to go into the pulmonary artery. Um, and uh, this is one way to increase it after loaders, just pushing the, the legs in. And you might have heard of the talk show host, Jimmy Fallon. His son had a heart condition, and it was Tetralogy of Fallon. I only mention it because it was in a lot of news stories, just maybe to make a connection. TAPVR, um, again, five letters. And uh, the pulmonary uh, veins, of course, are supposed to connect into the um, left atrium. Um, but... In this case, we have the pulmonary veins connecting into the right atrium. Another picture here, pulmonary veins should be going in here, but instead they're going into the right atrium. So this is obviously uh, quite bad. So an atrial septal defect might um, develop just to deal with the large right atrial pressure. Um, Epstein's anomaly, again, the anomaly is that his, six has nothing to do with it. T has nothing to do with it. Um, uh, lithium exposure, which is a treatment for bipolar and antidepressant disorders. Um, in utero can, can cause this. Um, the tricuspid valve is, is normally like this and it's gonna be pushed significantly downwards and it's gonna be open a lot more. So two things, one, you can imagine that um, this right ventricle is teeny tiny, puny, weak, uh, so I'm gonna have right heart failure. In addition, this valve looks like it kind of stinks, so a lot of the blood's gonna just go back into the right atrium. So we also have severe tricuspid regurgitation. Um, coarctation of the aorta, so for whatever reason, I have a little narrowing here and the descending aorta right after the arch. Um, it's going to make it difficult for blood to flow down here. So instead, the blood is just going to flow upwards. Um, you know, normally we have this picture, but here we have this picture, which means we're going to have a high pressure in our upper extremities and a lower pressure in our lower extremities. Uh, you can also see this on an uh, 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 radiology image. And... Um, on an x-ray specifically, uh, you see this notched appearance. It's really difficult to see, but you can kind of see these little like weird spider web type things coming out. Um, so this is just uh, like collateral circulation. So we still need to get blood down through the you know descending aorta, the abdominal aorta, but it's just difficult to get there. So it's gonna take all of these weird uh, superfluous roots and um, go through the intercoastal arteries and, and come around to find an alternative way to merge with the abdominal aorta to get down there. But this thickens them over time and this eventually can just be noticed on an uh, x-ray. A um, couple risk factors to George syndrome we said uh, leads to tetralogy of phthalate. Lithium for bipolar and antidepressant uh, leads to Epstein anomaly. We have no tricuspid. Um, Turner syndrome is a bicuspid aortic valve, which can lead to many different things, uh, including the coarctation of the aorta. Marfan syndrome uh, leads to many different issues, um, mitral valve prolapse, aortic regurgitation, uh, aortic aneurysm dissection, which we'll talk about later. Down syndrome leads to uh, an ASD, and fetal alcohol syndrome can lead to any of our acyanotic disorders.